नमो तस्से भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस्से भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस्से भगवतो अरहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे As you all, you all can remember, uh, we started uh, Brahmajala Sutta, which is the first Sutta in the Dīgani Kāya. And uh, if I quickly uh, summarize what we did last time, so at one occasion, Buddha and the Sangha was travelling between Rajagaha and the Nalanda. It's a long path, and while they were travelling, walking, uh, two other ascetics. One of them is called Supya. He is a wanderer. And his pupil is the Brahmadatta. They too uh, accompanying the Buddha, so they are also in the crowd. But uh, Supya was uh, criticizing the Buddha and the Sangha and the Dhamma, while his student Brahmadatta is trying to defend, trying to sort of explain the qualities, the good qualities. And the, this uh, discussion keep going on even when Buddha uh, spend a night. At other place, they too has taken the rest there. They are also that their discussion continued. Supya is blaming or criticizing while the Brahmadatta is trying to defend. Now, at that moment, uh, the monks the next day morning they had a discussion, telling how beautiful, how profound that Buddha has enumerated the quality of the people. Where they have their different uh, kind of biases. Te na Bhagavata Janata Pasata Arhata Samma Sambuddhe na Satta Nang Nana Di Mukti Kata Supati Vidita. So different people have different opinions. Different people have different biases, inclinations, and how well Buddha has explained that. So this was the kind of praise that the Sangha had for the Buddha. At that time, Buddha arrived the meeting place. And he asked, "What were you discussing?" And after telling that, Buddha actually gave a very interesting uh, instruction here. If when when someone is criticizing Buddha and Dhamma Sangha, if you are unhappy, if you become angry, if you become resentful, then you can't properly understand what they are talking, and again you can't properly answer, and your mind become. Distorted, your mind become a sort of hindered, so it will be a downfall for you. So you should not become attached to what they are talking, and not you should not become angry. Rather, you have to carefully listen to what they are talking, and later, if opportunity arise, you have to properly say, pro- correctly say, okay, these are not available with us. These are wrong things. Those are unfounded. Ungrounded, so like that you have to properly answer. On the other hand, when someone is uh, speaking, uh, sort of praising. So at that moment, if you are delighted, if you become so uplifted, elated, they are also you can't understand what they are talking, and uh, they are also you. It would be a hindrance for your practice. So what you need to do is to maintain the balanced mind. Listen what they are talking, and if you got the opportunity, you can say, "Okay, these are correct, these are wrong, these qualities are available with the triple gems, these are not available." So likewise, you can do the proper analysis. So you can see Buddha as a teacher. So he had this uh, moderation, or he has this calmness. He is able to maintain the tranquility amidst praise and blame. So that is one of his special qualities, what we call as a thadi guna, where he is maintaining that uh, unwavering kind of mind amidst all that ups and downs of the life. So we all are going through that vicissitudes of the life that is unavoidable even to the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, or rather, and we can say the, uh, Sangha. So even at that kind of uh, ups and downs. Buddha and the Arahants were able to maintain the balance. Now, further, Buddha adds here, starting with his uh, explanation, he says that when people are praising, they are actually praising me for some elementary or inferior matters, particularly about the moral practice. It doesn't mean that he 
has uh, looked down the moral practice but rather these are trivial these are obvious so buddha not killing animals is an obvious thing he not taking what is not given not stealing he is something obvious he is not getting involved with sensual pleasures sexual pleasures it's obvious so likewise he keep on explaining the chula sila we are the short section on morality all the typical precepts are they are explained 10 precepts are they are and further than that there are uh, certain other things slowly get into the picture which are relevant to the higher ordained monks like uh, not uh, harming the plant life not harming seeds uh, and not doing any kind of uh, messaging from one one lay person to another lay person not carrying any messages and not getting involved with the uh, uh, sort of mean or law kind of uh, science kind of uh, occupations so he keeps on explaining that uh, the middle rather the short section on morality and then he keep on explaining the middle section of morality which is an explanation of what we already discussed so particularly about the seeds how they are which are the ones propagating their species so those may be through roots or seeds or stems so the monks are or the buddha is basically does not destroy that and people the worlding would praise the tathagata the buddha based on that so buddha says those are trivial things and again the storing of goods and enjoying the stored foods so that is something buddha does not accommodate and people might uh, praise him for that and he does not involve with dancing singing music displays recitations fairy shows acrobatics etc etc and that is also something that people would praise for the buddha but buddha says those are trivial immaterial things so likewise he keep on explaining the morality and uh, so then we came to the last section on morality so there are particularly various kinds of uh, occupations various kinds of uh, with respect to the high ordained monks high ordained seela high ordination so there are not appropriate for a monk to get involved with so certainly buddha is also not get involved with such things very much like uh, forecasting uh, farm fa- palm tree uh, talking about the dreams giving certain forecast about the dream analysis of the dreams and talking about the body marks uh, and and certain other things like uh, judging the gems uh, any any kind of patterns in certain certain phenomena so likewise it's keep on going and uh, with the predictions about a war whether there's a war going to happen between two groups two kingdoms and who two kings who is going to win who is going to uh, sort of lose who is are they going to take over so likewise certain predictions with respect to politics with respect to administration all that and uh, maybe about the climate uh, today going to rain today is not going to rain there are going to be a tsunami so likewise various kinds of uh, climatic predictions and uh, then doing some marriage arrangements reading the horoscopes uh, that part of it and those are all basic kind of below type of arts or below kinds of professions which are not suitable for a monk lay people may of course can get involved doesn't matter but not as an ascetic not as a lay not as a fully ordained monk and further that uh, doing some sort of surgeries giving some medicine uh, so that sort of things and then uh, doing certain sacrifices on behalf of some certain matter and trying to help the people uh, giving them good fortune so all are basically with respect to the sealer and people actually uh, praise the buddha for these things but buddha mention it is monks for such elementary inferior matters of moral practice 
that the worlding would praise the Tathagat. So you can see that even though Buddha has given a significant uh, position to the Sila, Sila Samadhi Panya, so that is the three Sikha, the gradual training, and when people are praising him for Sila, he didn't consider it as a real praise. Now he is going to explain what are the sublime things, important things, if people can understand how Buddha has to be praised. Actually the point is that people can't understand those things. Those are so subtle, so difficult to understand, so they don't have much idea about these things. So that's why they don't even know how to praise the Buddha. They don't know how, what a kind of a service that Buddha has done to these areas. Because these are fairly spiritual, fairly sort of into the views, into the ideas. And uh, those are more into spiritual side. People, much of the people, large majority of the people are not into that. So they have their children to look after, wife to look after, or oh, they have to involve with their say materialistic uh, goals, occupations, etc, etc. So they have these mundane things which are more important for them. They don't have time to get involved with some uh, deeper spiritual goals or deeper spiritual teachings. So they don't know much about that. As a result of that, they don't know how to praise the Buddha. Buddha's service, Buddha's uh, contribution towards that spiritual side is not known to many. Now he is going to explain uh, how these spiritual people after they get involved with the spiritual side leaving aside the uh, lay world how can they become entangled in various wrong views. And there are such 62 wrong views explained here. Now those can be divided into several groups so we will start with the first group which is called Pubbanta Kappika speculators about the past. Now interesting thing is after one becomes a monk or some other uh, ascetic so they have some time for their own uh, spiritual quest. They don't, they don't have to spend time on raising their children or attending various uh, other mundane day activity so they don't want to uh, plowing and getting involved with the occupation so likewise they have some time for their own spiritual quest and so they start meditating and uh, and basically uh, they develop fair amount of uh, concentration so assume that there's a monk who given up all the uh, all of his possessions his uh, spouse relatives and then he became a monk and he is ardent in his practice and was able to develop jhana master the jhana and then he was able to attain pubbe nivasanusati jhana so that is the facility the, that is the uh, capability to recall past lives so while recalling past lives, now he is uh, thoroughing it, expanding it. He is now able to recall one birth. He is able to recall two births. He is recalled to, uh, say, recall 10 births, 20 births, 100 births, 1000 births, 100,000 births, many, many 100,000 uh, births. So likewise, now he is keep on recalling his past lives and it's also happening very vividly so he can remember where where he has born and what was his name what was his clan and then uh, say uh, what was the caste and how he was doing uh, etc etc what was the food how he has sort of behaved all every every information it's very much like we are rewinding the episodes you have in a particularly at this particular life but you are rewinding your past lives previous lives 
how each and every episode is now visible in a in a more spotless manner so it's everything is clear so he has a very good vision about his past lives and uh, but the interesting thing is this keep on going and uh, there he come to a wrong conclusion and he say the self and the world are eternal because he can see he is coming from this life to another life another life another life keep on going on never ending so he simply decide okay the self and the world is eternal and you have no cha- you can't do any change at all and you have will or you have uh say intention don't have much impact it certainly has impact on where you may be born but things are rolling never stop it's eternal and uh, these beings rush around circulate pass away and rearise and this remains eternally because i have seen it through my own through my own wisdom so this is how he proclaims now this is how the first wrong view arises which is actually with respect to the past and he decides okay things are eternal now there's another wrong view there yeah, he is even capable and he even able to uh, recognize how this whole world system come to a destruction and then again rearise and so such kind of a contraction and expansion of this whole world system he was able to recognize it's taking long long time but this person is capable of recognizing such periods of contraction and expansion of the whole world system and two of such contractions and expansion three of such contractions and Uh, expansion so like keep going on and he would he would reach 10 such contractions and expansions it's a long long thing takes really long time years but this person is capable now he can see that all and they are also he come to the conclusion and he can see his his own past lives so he come to the conclusion again uh thinking that everything is eternal eternal in the sense particularly his life was eternal and uh, because it is rolling again and again even when the uh, world is destroying again it is re happening reformed but the life is continuing so he decides okay life is continuous eternal so this is the the case this is the second wrong view uh where he come to a conclusion by seeing the contraction and expansion of this whole world system again again you can see it is based on meditation by the way first one also based on meditation second one also based on meditation particularly about the concentration so the concentration is so powerful so he is able to develop the pubbe nivasa anusti jnana recollection of of the past lives using which he is now recalling now he can even recall 10 contractions and expansions of the whole world system now there's another third uh, wrong view actually here also the difference is about the skill that this person has for the recollection of the past lives so this person actually has even more capacity to go beyond 10 contractions and expansions and he would uh, stop at the 40 periods of contractions and expansions so this how things are divided like and sangvattani vivattani sangvatta vivattani chattali sampi sangvatta vivattani there are 40 expansions and contractions he is able to recognize again and again he can understand okay how he lived what he ate and how was his past life and who that he has accompanied so all the details are available to him 
and he decides okay life is eternal Let's keep going on i have seen many forty number of contractions and expansions of this whole system life is continuing people are born from this to there again come back again reborn it's continuing it's eternal so he come to the wrong conclusion of based on that now that is the third wrong view now the fourth wrong view it is not based on actually the meditation it is based on the logic so there is a person an ascetic he is a logician a reasoner so he can actually uh, argue properly he can actually think about properly reflect properly reason out properly and based on his own inferential knowledge logical knowledge logical understanding line of thought he argues the self and the world are eternal and he he has evidence for that his own based on his own ideas his own views so basically he is a very good logical thinker based on his own proliferation he actually come to a conclusion so this world is eternal and it is firmly set there is nothing to change it keeps it keep eternally going on and these beings who are actually circulating in this whole system again pass away again rearise again pass away again rearise never ending so he decides based on his own logical logical reasoning okay this life is continuous this is eternal these are the four ways would they say that the ascetics and brahmins are have become eternalists and proclaim the eternity of the self and the world on four grounds and he basically concludes apart from these four grounds there is no any other complete eternity eternity for someone else to define so whatever the eternity the complete eternity that someone is defining is based on these four matters and uh, interesting thing here buddha basically concludes this monk the tathagata understands so he understood how people come to this wrong conclusion he understood how people come to this wrong view and uh, he further understood having harbored these wrong views view points what would be the repercussion when they grasp this particular wrong view when they are adhered to such wrong view and this is the destination this is how they are going to end up with having a sort of a uh, place based on that wrong view such and such destination in another world so they are not freed they are not they can't attain nibbana so they are their minds are fixated and uh, buddha understood how they went wrong and he also had the understanding about all the different kinds of expansions contractions of this whole different world systems he through can see his own past lives also but he didn't attach to that pubbeni vasanasuti he didn't attach to that sort of a knowledge and he didn't come to a wrong conclusion he has experienced for himself perfect peace and having truly understood the arising and passing away of feelings their attraction their peril and deliverance from them the tathagata is liberated without remainder so buddha mentioned he has understood all this all this eternalist views he understood based on what ground that they are proclaiming such uh, view he understood and he basically detached from all that he didn't come to a conclusion or wrong view based on all whatever such analysis his mind is liberated he didn't un- he understand the arising and passing away of feelings even about that knowledge and basically he was able to understand the sort of uh, deliverance from all that and so his mind is very much like freed 
liberated. So the Buddha here mentioned, okay, these are in a way the profound matters. Hard to see. Hard to understand. People can't see these things. People might see only a, only about this life. They can't even see the past lives. Even the immediate past lives, they can't. How about 10 past lives, 100 past lives, 1000 past lives, 100,000 past lives, many eons, many contractions and expansions of this whole world systems. So it's a vast subject. So people don't have such capacity. And even when someone has that capacity, how they come to a wrong conclusion? So that is where the problem is. So they come to a wrong conclusion based on those wrong data. And because they have limited capacity to see all this. And that is where the Buddha's wisdom highlights. So here he mentioned basically his wisdom is capable of understanding all that. He was able to understand all this and basically he decides so these are kind of limited views, these are wrong views and he understood only this people have some partial knowledge. Based on that uh, they come to the wrong understanding, wrong view and uh, and Buddha having understood all that he was able to detached from all this so since they are since buddha is detached he was able to see the truth see the realities so his mind is uh, uh, basically liberated and basically so if someone can see the sort of profundity of here profundity of buddha's understanding at this respect on based on this context that is something to be praised. So you can see the argument here. So people have very limited understanding even though they have some extraordinary capacity to see their past lives. They are also their understanding is very limited. Even though we are talking hundreds and thousands of past lives here. Even though we are talking 40 uh, Expan uh, contractions and expansions of the whole world system but still it is something limited when it compares to the Buddha's knowledge he understood all this and he is detached from all this he didn't grasp this uh, view a kind of a conclusion so his mind is liberated so if one can appreciate the Buddha's teaching based on such profound understanding, so then Buddha say, okay, this is some fair ground to praise him. And uh, then we come to another set uh, that is called partial eternity and partial non-eternity. So we are going to different deep subjects here. Now we already discussed about the eternity, four grounds on that, where they simply say, okay, entirely the whole world system, whole life is utterly continuous, utterly eternal, never ending. So that is the four eternalist views that we already discussed. Now we come to another set, which is called partial eternity and partial non-eternity. How that happens? Now, now, now actually you can see that how Buddha look at the whole world system. Uh, Buddha say uh, there comes a time monks sooner or later after a long period when this whole world contracts. That means basically here it is destroyed. And that such, such kind of a destruction so the beings are mostly reborn in the Abhasara Brahma world. So it's a Abhasara Brahma world is uh, we can say the Rupi Brahma world, a fairly uplifted state of mind, Jahanic level. As far as I can remember, I think it belongs to the fourth Jahana. And uh, it's a very long lifespan. And they spend their 
So large majority of people are born there now in this Brahma world and they dwell there and they have some extraordinary capacities and they can create anything using the mind and they are fed by delight they are through their happiness and they have their self luminosity and they can fly through the air and glorious so you can visualize you can imagine such a capacity uh, say you are you are able, you don't need the airplane to travel <laughs> you, you you don't need vehicles to travel so you can travel by yourself you have your own mental power to travel and you have your own glorious view you can create anything you can mind made anything and you are emanating sort of uh, rays kind of light and you are such a glorious kind of a person now you are living there for long long time now people are living there for long long time and uh, by the way there's another empty brahma realm is appearing no nobody is there yet all are in the abasma abasar brahma realm but there's another brahma realm nobody has risen there yet it appears and uh, one being who has passed away in this abasara brahma realm will be reborn in that empty brahma realm now he is the first comer he is the one who appeared first in this new brahma realm and he is again is a glorious person he is again has all that capacities he is now in a separate place but he is alone nobody is there is the single brahma and he too is self luminous moving through the air feeding on the light glorious mind made and he lives there for long long time and later he feel lonely <laughs> so he wish okay let the other beings also come here so i may have a company then so i can't bear this loneliness anymore let other beings also appear here so he has such kind of a wish now another being who are passed away from the abasara brahma realm so he appeared in this new brahma realm now already that the first comer was there this new comer has seen this previous guy and few more are again coming in coming in coming in they all notice the first comer so the first come that uh, that brahma basically has a idea okay i may be eternal because these beings are coming and they have short lives compared to myself so other say newly come uh, brahmas they spend some time and they pass away but the first come the very first brahma he is fairly long life and he can't see any change in him so he see that others are coming and going so basically he decides okay i am a brahma the great brahma the conqueror the unconquered all seeing i can see the whole thing i am the brahma i am the maha brahma i am eternal now he come to the conclusion okay i am eternal the other brahmas also they also conclude the same thing okay this fellow was before us and even when our group someone of our companions are passed away still this fellow is still there so he should be the ruler he should be the creator he should be the lord he should be the maker of the world and uh, he is the appointer he is the orderer and we are in a way we are not eternal he is eternal and now interesting thing is so that uh, a person who passed away from that uh, brahma realm now he is born in the human realm now this fellow became a monk or became some kind of a brahman brahman uh, some kind of an ascetic and uh, and he was able to uh, develop fair amount of concentration jhana master the jhana and he get the capacity to look at his past lives now he is looking at his past lives now he can see the previous life 
how he behaved, how he lived in that previous Brahman realm. And there he noticed that Mahabrahman, he is eternal. But we, we are not eternal. We came back, we, we died from there and now I am reborn in this human realm. But there is a person who is eternal in that Brahmalayam. He is the creator. He is the creator God. He is the superpower. And he is actually the one who has created us. And he is the sort of all seeing Mahabrahma. He is the conqueror. He is the creator God. Now he comes up with this view. So there is partial eternity and partial not eternity. So partially eternal in the sense that there is a Mahabrahma, a creator God, he is eternal, he is, he is existing forever, he is the one creating us, we are not eternal. So this is the conclusion he come, comes up with and he decides, okay, that Mahabrahma, that creator God, he created us, he made us, but we are not eternal, we are not permanent, but he is permanent, he is eternal. He is not subject to any kind of change. He lives forever. So this is the view this particular ascetic, this particular monk or this particular whoever the spiritual guy come to as a conclusion. So this is another wrong view which is partially eternal, partially not eternal. Okay, so that is the fifth one. Then the sixth one. Now, there's a Deva realm. Now, we de discuss about the Brahma realm. Now, there's a discussion about the Deva realm. They are called Kidda Padusika Deva. Kidda Padusika. So, that means they are more into the enjoyment of the pleasures. And they are playing, they are involved with sex, sex activities, and they are, you know, more into the pleasure, more and more enjoyment. Interesting thing is, they even forget to have their meals. <laughs> they, they spend an excessive amount of time addicted to merriment, play and enjoyment, so that their mindfulness is dissipated. So they are, they are not mindful. They can't remember, okay, at this particular time I have to eat, otherwise this body will decay, otherwise this body will die, because they have a certain kind of uh, li life, which is utterly dependent on certain kind of uh, food, if they are not eating on that particular time, their body will pass away. So these people, these uh, gods, celestial beings, since they are infatuated with this uh, enjoyment, sensual uh, gratification, they forgot it. They forgot to eat. And ultimately their body is uh, sort of dissipated. So one of them actually fall to the human realm. He born in the human realm. He's fallen from that human, he's fallen from that previous Kidda Padusika uh, uh, heaven realm. He's born here. Later he became a spiritual guy. He renounced the worldly life. He renounced his uh, say house, wife, etc. etc. Now he meditates. He develops concentration, he develops jhana, he mastered jhana, he was able to recognize the past lives. He was able to recognize or recall the past life. But the interesting thing is he only can recall one past life. That is previous past life, nothing else. So there he come to a conclusion. Okay, I was there. I was too much involved with sensual gratification. So I went to a downfall. I couldn't have meals. So I died from there. Because I was not mindful. And now I am reborn here. I am not eternal. I am very sure about it. But there are celestial beings who are not like me. So they are eternally available there. So they are completely mindful. They are not involved with excessive sensual gratification. But there are such eternal gods available in that particular heavenly realm. So he come to that sort of a conclusion. So 
they are eternal they are in a way uh, long lived but we are and they are permanent stable eternal but we are not we are impermanent we are unstable we are short lived and so he comes to this sort of a uh, partially eternal and partially not eternal wrong view then we come to the seventh wrong view and that is again related to uh, what we call a uh, heavenly realm it is called manopadusika deva previously there was a kidda padusika here is called manopadusika that means even though they are heavenly beings they still have some jealousy enmity so one of them have some enmity with another person that also has an enmity with this person so they are mentally corrupted even though they are born in the heavenly realm they are jealous of each other and that corruption of the mind caused them to die from there so you can see it's a entirely based on the karma so when one is born in the heavenly realm it's entirely based on the karma so if they are developing maintaining kind of a jealousy enmity and that sort of uh, defiled state of mind so they are come quickly fades away because they were born from they are using a good come and again their body is spontaneous fairly dependent on the come so when they are developing sort of unwholesome state of mind it starts deteriorating ultimately the body completely dis- completely destroyed or disappeared and they die from there and that is the person who now born here in this human realm the same story follows he he renounced the worldly life and he became a ascetic person and he went through the jhanic practice higher concentrations and he was able to recall past life just the past life nothing else and he understood okay i was unfortunately reborn here because i have maintained a corrupted mind but there are beings who are not like me they are eternally there they are i maintain a very good mentality they are not envious each other they are eternally permanently there but here i am not like that so there are beings who like me who are not eternal so he come to a conclusion based on that so this is the seventh wrong view partly eternal partly not eternal now we come to the last wrong view based on this partial eternity and partial non eternity so they are again uh, a kind of a monk or ascetic person who simply here in this human realm he is a thinker he is a logician and he come up with various theories he can he can basically convince others he can basically uh, properly logically think and uh, he he mentioned whatever is called eye or ear or nose or tongue or body that is impermanent that is unstable that is not eternal liable to change that is obvious so this is the body this body is not eternal your eye ear nose tongue body so this is not eternal you are you, this body will die but what is called thought or mind or consciousness that is a self that is permanent stable eternal not subject to change the same for ever and ever so he has analyzed this body and the mind and he concludes okay this body is not eternal this is impermanent but the mind is permanent consciousness is permanent is it it is eternal now he come to the such kind of a wrong view so he grasp this view and uh, basically he comes up with this eternity based on his consciousness or the mind and complete destruction of this body which is not eternal this is the wrong partial eternity and not and partial not eternity he comes as a wrong view and after explaining all these four wrong views buddha further mentioned 
This marks the Tathagata understand. These viewpoints thus grasped and adhered to will lead to such and such destination in other world. So whoever people who are harboring these uh, wrong views have these kind of destinations because they have their thought process, their conclusions, their behavior are based on these wrong views and this is how they are, they'll be reborn ultimately because of those wrong views. This the Buddha knows and more than that also Buddha knows because these people have only a limited understanding so Buddha has the complete understanding so as a result of that he is not attached to these wrong views and his mind is peaceful he is not grasping any of these his mind is completely peaceful liberated he understood the properly things and and here monks are those matters which are profound hard to see hard to understand peaceful, excellent, beyond mere thought, subtle to be experienced by the wise, which the Tathagata having realized from by his own wisdom, super knowledge proclaims. So you can see where the Buddha needs to be praised. Because you can recognize how people can go wrong and how can they get trapped entangled in wrong views <clears throat> even though they have given up the, all the worldly pressures. They are completely dedicated for the spiritual life but unfortunately get entangled. Unfort unfortunately get trapped and come up with wrong views. And most of them are very good meditators. They are able to develop jhana. They are able to develop a thorough concentration. But ultimately come to a wrong conclusion. But Buddha on the other hand has developed all that, has beyond, gone beyond all that. He didn't grasp any of these wrong views. His mind is liberated. So that is one profound point. Buddha to be praised. Not telling that he is not killing animals or not stealing, not involved with sex, sex or not doing any kind of harmful activity. So those are obvious trivial matters to be praised but these kind of profound things are the real profound base real profound facts if someone needs to if someone needs to properly praise the Buddha okay with that I conclude today's uh, Sutta teaching session we were able to cover eight wrong views explained in this Brahmajala Sutta and uh, now if you have any question you can raise your hand Are there any questions on your side, Bhante? No, everybody understood. <laughs> <laughs> several people are here. Case, several, I? yeah, yeah. Several people are here, but all are silent. Okay, uh, we do have one uh, question from Joseph. Feel free to unmute. Hi, Joseph. We can't seem to hear anything. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Sorry about that. Hello, Bonte. Yep. So, as these would be experiences during the meditation, I'm thinking the, what I'm taking away from this is that in the meditation, if we're having a deep concentration experience and various ideas, um, what appear to be deep insights come to the mind, is to not see it as something worth attaching to. Mm -hmm. Is to, is to um, no matter how beautiful, profound, uh, insightful uh, it appears is to say no or um, not get attached mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling that that's the message um, mm -hmm. would that be correct and, and to sort of he mentions the Buddha mentions the um, seeing the feelings 
as attractive and then perilous and then to be abandoned is mm. to redirect attention back to a kind of Vedana, Nupasana. Would that be, would that be a, a correct? Uh, we don't need to say that you need to go back to Vedana, Nupasana. Rather, as you correctly mentioned, so whatever these uh, thoughts come into the mind, visualizations come into the mind, uh, should not be attached with. Now, even Buddha mentioned now, even to his Dhamma, Dhamma vibhikave pahatamba pangeva adhamma. He mean, simply mentioned, monks, even the Dhamma to be abandoned, let go of, then no point of talking about the adham, the wrong views. So even the Dhamma Buddha ultimately sort of disclaim. So this is the this is the raft, the simile of the raft. Probably you can remember. So simply Buddha say Dhamma is like a raft. It is for you to cross to the other shore. Not for you to grasp. Not for you to carry over with on your head. Rather it is it is mentioned, proclaimed by the Buddha for a particular purpose, and uh, that's all. You can take the benefit from that. Liberate yourself. Give up even the Dhamma now. So basically Buddha does not allow, does not appreciate us to attach to anything. Sabbe Dhamma Nalang Abhinivesaya. That's another famous statement by the Buddha. So nothing is worthy of attachment. But that doesn't mean that we have to immediately give up the Dhamma. So you know it is very much like we are climbing a ladder. So when you are climbing a ladder, so you have to strongly hold the upper rung and uh, then you are coming once you are moving up so you are letting go of that holding and you are catching another another rung so likewise you are going up and up ultimately you don't need the you don't need the entire ladder so dhamma is dhamma is very much like that that's a wonderful analogy yep. of the ladder right? Um, also, just in the context of other um, lectures I've been doing in my um, secular mindfulness group, I came across um, a S- Stephen Batchelor. Maybe you know of him, who's a, uh-huh. a former uh, Buddhist monk. He wrote the book Buddhism Without Beliefs, and he's promoting a sort of secular Buddhism. Cutting. And I, I was reading a, um, a critique by Bhikkhu Bodhi. On his book, uh-huh. and before he was, was saying how the religious elements of the Buddhism, specific, specifically, for example, like the belief system, which we can't verify, for mm. example, in tonight's talk, the talk of the Deva realm, the Brahma realm, mm. we can't verify that personally. Mm-hmm. But Bodhi was saying how that was still an important, really important part of it and if we were to take that part away Mm -hmm. it would kind of be like you having the raft but you don't have the compass Mm -hmm. telling you which direction to go in Mm -hmm. i kind of felt that um Mm -hmm. just interesting to to, when i hear these these stories of the the brahmas and the Mm -hmm. devas they sound very much like people correct as well what they're doing and so i guess it's are we supposed to take this metaphorically as a reflection of our our worldly life, or is really the belief in this other world, which we can't know, mm. this invisible world, mm-hmm. is the belief that that is true really essential to understanding the Dhamma that's, that we're hearing? Ah, yeah, interesting question. So basically there are long passages about the discussions with the heavenly beings like God, Sakka, Entirely Sutta is there a discussion based on the god Sakka called Sakka Panya Sutta again in the Diganikaya. And there are in the connected discourses Devata Sangyutta where Buddha had discussions with various different celestial beings. And there are even humans after passed away they become uh, celestial beings. For example, that the, 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 the supermost, what we call the, a kind of a, uh, a very good uh, person, that Anatha Pindika who built up the Jethavana monastery. So he passed away and he born in the Tusser realm. So likewise, so many, many stories are there. So so in comes to the Dhamma. So the these are not uh, permanent gods, by the way. So they are another another realm. 
depending on their past merits so they are reborn there and uh, after some time after completing their lifespan again they may die from there and even the even the brahmas based on their merit and based on their concentration they are reborn either in the first in the first group second group third group fourth group like that and even there are some arupa brahmas who doesn't have a material body simply the name the, the mind part exists but still nothing is eternal so they have developed certain amount of uh, capacity <clears throat> maybe spiritual power or kind of merit power based on that they are they are reborn onto these different realms but they are also impermanent so a, that's the kind of a view that the buddhism gives us not not a creator god or not a eternal god not a single god rather they are mini gods they are separate different realms of course we can't see them but that doesn't mean that they do they do not exist because if we have to give up all the uh, stories all the different beautiful suttas which are discussions between the buddha and the celestial beings and monks and the celestial beings then we are losing a huge part of the dhamma right yeah right thank you thank you very much pati yeah 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 everyone sanna yeah everyone sanna Any other questions, Pante? Yeah. Any question from here? Yeah, we have a question from here. Yes. Sanam, um, I don't know whether I'm asking too early this question because mm. I'm leaving on Sunday, uh-huh. so you are in the middle of this uh, explanation. Right. So as per I, what I have heard, mm. so these sixty there's a like sixty two traps in Brahmajala Sutra, Buddha mentioning mm-hmm. like whoever in the Sota Pati Marga. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the path ah. will uh, eliminate yeah yeah we can say so because even now here we already discussed eight wrong views so there we can say he has certain attachment yeah so he is grasping a particular view so grasping particular view is something we can uh, recognize available as a worldling but uh, when it comes to the what we call a sotapan So there are three three particular fetters that he may give up, what we call sakkaya ditti, the personality view, uh, the vichikicha, the doubt, and then the silabbata paramas, where he is strongly adherent to rules and rituals, It's kind of adherences, observances. So the wrong views is another thing we can include here. Uh, this was sakkaya ditti is the one uh, strong ground. which leads towards these wrong views so in order to have a wrong view there is a considerable affirmation of a self in oneself also and he is affirming affirming a self in other person also now all this here we see if there is a permanent god that's a you know as a person as an individual he's an individual So it's a kind of affirmation of a affirmation of a sakkaya ditti. Yeah. So he is considering him as a superpower, him as a person, him as an individual. He's a person. So such kind of thing cannot happen in a sotha panna because he he sees everything is impermanent. All are merely five aggregates. So these aggregates are you know uh, maybe helping it, each other and they are different condition. Conditionally dependent, uh, dependently uh, reason, they are not eternal. None of them are eternal. So what we had are the existence of co- this uh, dependent arising of these five aggregates. Currently, what we have is also like that. Even if I have in the future, that is also like that. And again, you are extending it to the others also. Yeah. Whoever we say gods, whoever we say man, humans, or celestial beings. they also are nothing apart from five aggregates so such kind of a view completely destroy all these uh, what we even discussed today all the eight views we just discussed uh become completely invalid based on the understanding of the buddha the dhamma that he has directed yeah yeah 
So therefore, as you said, so t a p a n n a can't have any of these. Mm. Yeah. And adding to that, um, in l o k u s a m i n a n s e s one of the uh, sermons I heard, mm. like you uh, please talk louder. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. So I heard one of the l o k u s a m i n a n s e s uh, discussion. Mm. He was explaining whoever practicing inside meditation, mm. he will face only 17 uh, these kind of traps, uh. but four to five of uh, them. Will face by some of the practices. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll come to that uh, yeah, uh, because it's too uh, early to ask this. It's too early to ask <laughs> because uh, from these 62 wrong views, there are 49 based on meditation. Yeah. Entirely 49 based on uh, uh, meditation. So 62 minus 49, how many? 49, 10, 13. Uh, to, uh, 13 no? 13 is apart from meditation. So now, even today, we discuss two. Now among these eight, six are based on meditation, okay. and two are not based on meditation, mm-hmm. rather based on contemplation or we can say logical reasoning. Okay. Logical reason. Two out of eight yeah. are based on logical reasoning, and we will go through all 62 and come up with the statistics. Okay. And uh, so the point is. Uh, I, I can't say that uh, even uh, Vipassana meditator at his early stage is entirely free from all the wrong views. As you said, he has to attain the Sotapanna for him to completely am- avoid any of these wrong views. Before that, he even can come to a wrong view, isn't it? Now, say, for example, Sati. Mm-hmm. For example. So, Sati, the monk called Sati, that is the theme of discussion in the Mahatanha Sankhya Sutta. Where he thought, okay, consciousness is permanent. Very much like uh, the last, uh, last partial, partial, eternal, partial, not eternal view. The body is not eternal, but the consciousness is eternal. Eternal. So he came to that wrong conclusion. He being a monk, yeah. then Buddha has to refute it. Buddha has to explain it is not correct. So likewise, uh, people can go wrong. So till. Till they have thorough understanding. Mm. <laughs> What I heard was like when he decides to meditate, he g o with the wisdom. Yeah, yeah. So he's having some kind of assurance mm. rather than the, uh, the concentration practice. Definitely. Yeah. So, this concentration practice, in the sense, uh, now here all what we have discussed so far are talking about the past lives yeah. based on not, not merely concentration, but rather the concentration is developed to a higher level. So, they were able to master Jhana using the mastery of Jhana. He is developed one Abhinya called the Pubbe Nivasa n u s i j n a So, but point is that Pubbe Nivasa n u s i j n a is limited. He only can see either just one past life, or he only can see, say, a hundred past lives, thousand past lives, hundred thousand past lives. Not a sort of endless kind of past lives. So, based on that, he made a decision. He made a decision. So, Buddha mentioned now, Pubba Koti Na Panyaya. So, you can't recognize the beginning of this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, the Samsara is like. Samsara is like. As as yeah. yeah. So, it's a kind of a. In, a, kind of a it's Endless. a very, very long journey that we are in, but it doesn't mean we are eternal either. <laughs> so, we can end the whole thing. <laughs> That's another thing. So, we definitely had many, many past lives, innumerable number of past lives. They are, that is also not a person being, you know, traveling from one to the other. But we are giving supporting conditions at each level to these five aggregates, isn't it? Yeah. So, it's now carrying momentum to the next life, next life, next life, next life. But if we thoroughly understand that as a truth in this life, there may be a possibility to, you know, Go away from this trap. Mm. So we are in a circu- circulation, in a complete circulation in this uh, sansara, yeah. but once you realize the Dhamma, you are cutting off. Something like that. Yes. Yes, <laughs> so it's a, in a way, I mean, that is where we need to understand what a, what a profound u n d e r s t a n d Buddha had. Yeah. Isn't it? So that is why Buddha again and again h i g h l i g h t So talking his sila is very trivial. Yeah. Tell him that. He is not killing animals, he is not involved with sex, he is not lying, he is not taking intoxicants, or he is not uh, using money. 
these are not real matters for him to be praised these are in a way obvious things but the the, the wrong views that can arise in the spiritual realm spiritual world and people get trapped they come to wrong conclusion and that is what ultimately they preach to the others isn't it the world the, the human realm the other lay people they believe these people mm-hmm. they are telling the truth okay they are there is a creator god there are eternity all that they proclaim and the other people will believe and they fight each other, each other. Mm. Yeah. so those are the areas in that sense if we thoroughly understand okay the buddha has basically seen the whole picture the big picture and he realized given up everything liberated yeah. something like that <laughs> yeah 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 there are some okay that's all from our side jennifer then we will conclude today's discussion and we will recite the traditional verses utavata cha amhe hi sambatam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sambha sampatti siddhiya etavata cha amhe hi sambatam punya sampadam sambhe bhuta anumodantu sambha sampatti siddhiya etavata cha amhe hi sambatam punya sampadam sambhe deva adve satta anumodantu sambha sampatti siddhiya आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मट्टा देवा महिदिका पुण्यतामोदिवा चिरा रखा तो शासन आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मट्ठा देवा महिदिका पुण्यतामोदिवा चिरा रखा तो देशन आकाशट्ठा च बुम्मट्ठा देवा महिदिका ुण्यंगुमो satam samagamo hotu yava nibbana pattiya imina punya kammena mame bala samagamo satam samagamo hotu yava nibbana pattiya imina punya kammena mame bala samagamo satam samagamo hotu yava nibbana pattiya sadu sadu sadu